And we're going to make some lemon ice cream for you today. And I want to talk to you about this, uh, this recipe because I've had it for years, but I got it out of a magazine and it was a winner of a cooking contest for desserts. I think it was 1993, and that's when I tried it, and all the kids loved it, and so I, I have a couple grandchildren who kind of expect it when they come in the, <laughs> through the door. It's so uh, this is a nice cream recipe that doesn't take a nice cream machine, which is what drew me to it. It's, it's just the ingredients that you stir all together, freeze, bring them back out, stir them again, and whip them through the food processor so that it's all smooth, and then freeze it again. So. That's what we're going to do. We're not going to juice the lemons in front of you because it just takes a lot of time. We're not going to zest the lemons in front of you because it just takes a lot of time. Those are the things that make, um, make, make it tedious to make, but the ingredients are so simple you won't ever forget them. Two cups, two cups, two cups, two, one teaspoon and one cup, and even I can remember that. <laughs> so um, I wanted to show you the juicers. This is a... Um, electric juicer and this recipe calls for one cup of fresh lemon juice. So this took three and a half lemons to get one cup and these were big lemons. These were Meyer lemons which are bigger than what we normally find. So if you were using the smaller lemons you probably would have to have six. maybe six lemons to get a full cup. But what's nice about this is that you can see the seeds of the lemons are right in there. They're all caught so you don't have to worry about the seeds going into your uh, whatever you're making. So that's juice. This is the zest, and we have got we have taken the time to make the zest. And I have to use the term we loosely because Lisa made the zest for me. But with zest, it's this is a zester, and it's four. It made especially four lemons. It's got one edge that's sharp and one edge that isn't, and you just peel down the uh, lemon, but it takes longer than this, which is actually a cheese cutter. But this, um, it has a bigger surface, so you can get a bigger surface when you're doing it. And if you don't like any of those, you can use the old-fashioned grater that your grandmother had. Actually, this grater was my grandmother's. That's how old it is. I remember when I remember when she died, I said, I want the grater. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> well, one thing about zesting the lemons is you just want to get the very top layer. You don't want the white stuff underneath. So it's just a... Uh, it's just yeah. real, you don't do it real hard. You just do right. it lightly. Right, because the white stuff is very bitter. Yeah, and you, don't, you do not want the white stuff in your product because it's going to make your product bitter. Right. So that's... And what about this juicer? Well, this is a manual juicer, which is really neat. Um, this little thing fits down in, and you can see where the lemon goes, and it locks in there, and then you have to put something underneath it to catch the juice, and you just, this is the handle, you just put the lemon in, put, bring the handle down, and you've got juice, and that's perfect for so, something small, but to stand here and do six lemons on this, it's a little bit time consuming, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit not hard. I don't mean to say it's hard. It's tedious is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but it works just fine. And um, there's also just a little juicer that looks about this round and it has one of these things on it and you have to put it over a little bowl and you can do it that way too. Right. And I have one of those but Lord knows where it is. <laughs> and I you would never it. use it today anyways. <laughs> no. And it certainly beats the heck out of putting the cheesecloth over the lemon and squeezing with hands because yeah. that just takes forever. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So, all of these things are available, and there'll be a, um, a little thing at the bottom of this showing you where you can order them if you want to. And so we want to start with the actual making of the ice cream. And when I say two cups, I'm going to show you. These Pyrex things are so nice. You can bake in these, and you can make really cool cakes. I've done moon cakes for my son, I've done Barbie cakes for my daughter, and you just bake football cake. cakes. Yeah, There's all you can make things. all kinds of cool things out of this thing. Okay, I want two cups, and this is, what's nice about it, their little uh, markings are all the way up so you know when you get to two cups. Half and half, two cups of half and half. Yeah. And two cups of milk. There. There we go. And two cups of sugar. 
No calories in this. <laughs> <laughs> and stir that all up real well. We haven't put the lemon juice in yet. And we haven't put the lemon zest in yet. But I wanted to get it stirred before I do that. And I want to add the six drops of yellow food co coloring. I actually yeah. followed the recipe. You I did. Would, you wouldn't have to. I mean, if you got seven drops in, would it ruin it? No, <laughs> it wouldn't. And then finally, the uh, juice. Whoops. Forgot I had a few chips there. <laughs> <laughs> so used to doing everything. And a teaspoon of lemon zest. Three teaspoons, I thought. I don't think. <laughs> Mm, we wouldn't want a tablespoon. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't follow the recipe. I know. There's one. And this might be a little more than two, but I think it is. I'm throwing it in. Okay. okay. Because it won't hurt it. It's no, just the flavor. The more the better, I think. And this ice cream is delicious. Oh, it is so good. It's my daughter's favorite. Yeah. Daughter, we just bought her first house. Yep. They just moved in yesterday. Okay, now I'm going to put this in a 9 by 13 dish. And it doesn't have to be Pyrex, it can be anything, but it's 9 by 13 specifically in the recipe book. Hmm. I just like to get, I like to make is. sure that the um, sugar. sugar is incorporated here. I love these spouted bowls too because they're so much easier to work with in a bowl. Yeah, it's great to mash potatoes in. And these, these things are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to break away. I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to cover this with uh, saran thing. wrap. And then I'm going to cut away while I put it in the freezer, but I want to tell you about putting it in the freezer. Um, it needs to be level and you need to make sure that you have room in your freezer before you go in there, before you open it and find out you have a full freezer. Because this is, um, it's big. It's big and it's liquid and if you do bump it or something it's going to, it's go going all to, over your freezer and you don't want that. Mess. So we'll be back. Okay, we just pulled this out of the freezer. It's been in overnight. It does not have to stay in that long. The, re the recipe said two hours at least. So uh, if you were doing it, you know, like if I wanted to, I did it last night and if I had wanted to do it this morning, I could have, but I didn't want to feel rushed this morning, so I didn't. Okay. Um, but we've got it all chunked up there because it was frozen solid and we've got it chunked up and we're going to put it in the food processor and uh, get it all blended together so it's like an ice cream consistency. Then we're going to put this bowl back in the freezer and we're going to freeze that like a good four hours and then when it comes out then it's ice cream. Okay, so, so let's put this in here. I'll take this. Okay. Just pour this in here, hopefully. I'll get out of your way. <laughs> I'm not going to do this for you because you, I just told you what I'm going to do. I'm going to puree it till it's kind of a creamy consistency and I'm going to put it in a bowl and I'm going to put it back in the freezer for at least four hours. This one has been done. Um, I did this yesterday so it's been in the freezer since last night. And I'm just going to get a couple little scoops. And what I was just saying that mint would be a beautiful garnish for this. Yeah, would be. Or and a lemon that's slice. How, that's how you would serve your lemon slice. Sle a lemon um, slice would be a nice garnish. Candied violets would be very nice. Oh, candied violets. If you're good. doing this in the springtime, which is really is when it goes very well, is in the springtime. It seems that everything's lemony in the springtime. Mm -hmm. Then you could, if you have pansies, you could put a little pansy in it because they're edible. But that's all there is to it, and it's very tasty. I just want to recap. It's very, the recipe itself is very easy. Two cups of everything. 
the milk, the half and half, the sugar, two teaspoons of the lemon zest, and six drops of the um, yellow food coloring. And that's basically it. What's time consuming is getting the lemon's juice and getting the zest ton. And one more thing I want to tell you about lemons. When you're juicing lemons, if you put them in the microwave for 30 to 40 seconds before you cut them, you get a lot more mm -hmm. juice, much more juice. So that's a good tip. So, and I also wanted to mention this um, ice cream ice scoop. Cream scoop. It, when you grasp it, the heat from your hand, it, ha it has antifreeze in it, and the heat from your hand warms the scoop, and so it's easier to get ice cream out. I, I've had this for years. I yes. love it. We all have one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. So that's it. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you, uh, if you haven't got the cookbook yet, I hope you do. Everybody that's gotten it has told me that they like it, because it's more than a cookbook. It's a story, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Thank you, Anne. <laughs>